okay in this chapter we are going to discuss about genetics so what is meant by genetics genetics is the study of flow of characters from the parents to the next generation the next generation is called as offspring or progeny so how the characters will flow from the parent generation to the next offspring or progeny is called as uh, genetics but you know the whatever all the characters of these uh, offsprings are exactly similar to that of parents because it is a parent DNA which is passed down to the next generation so they should have exactly the same characters of parents but uh, sometimes uh, these uh, offsprings may have one or two or few new characters new characters for example if the parents may have a curly hair the children may have a silky hair if they have a dark complexion the children may have a fair complexion if they have uh, free ear lobes the children may have attached ear lobes or if the parents have attached ear lobes the children may have free ear lobes so it can be anything or the iris color the parents may have a dark iris and the children may have a uh, brown iris so these new characters which you see in the offsprings but which are not found in the parent generation they are called as uh, variations they are called as variations okay so what are variations these are the new characters which are found in the parent gen sorry in the offsprings but not found in the parents they're called as variations but now what is the reason for these variations why these new characters are produced in the offspring what is the reason it is due to the error in the dna copying mechanism it is due to errors in dna copying mechanism because you know if you take a paper xerox you may not get exactly the same print of course it looks like that but when you see under a microscope under high resolution you may find one or two black dots or some black shadings that's because of the error in the copying mechanism in the xerox machine of some repair so similarly even in the dna also when it's duplicated when it's replicated when a new copy is made there are some errors which creep in and those errors which creep in during the DNA copying mechanism are later expressed as variations because you know DNA is a very long DNA if you remove all the DNA from all the 10 trillion cells of our body you can go around the equator of the earth four times so a very long DNA such a long DNA you, you cannot expect to be copied exactly there are some errors which uh, creep in here and there so those errors are later expressed in the offspring as variations so variations are due to errors during DNA copying mechanism and now coming back to uh, genetics um, see first time a scientific study on genetics was started by an Austrian monk uh, who is called as uh, Mendel Grigor Johann Mendel he is actually a priest a father in a church but um, uh, after the prayers uh, he would also go and teach in a secondary school and uh, also in his spare time he would go to a monastery garden which was at the back of the church and do uh, the breeding experiments uh, the genetic experiments on plants he selected uh, pea plants for his experiment so in his spare time when he was doing experiments on the pea plants uh, he discovered many uh, rules laws of genetics and that is why he is called as the the father of genetics he is called as father of genetics because he was the uh, first person who laid a scientific foundation who first time made a scientific study on genetics who laid the foundation for genetics he is called as um, that's why uh, father of genetics Mendel and uh, for his uh, breeding experiments he selected only uh, pea plants pea plants he selected pea plants spisum sativum is a scientific name he selected pea plant for his uh, experiments but why did he select only pea plants because these pea plants had some special characters what are those special characters these pe these pea plants had many traits he had it had many traits for various characters for various characters for example if you take height as a character it had a tall trait short trait 
and if you take flower color it had purple trait and uh, white color flowers and uh, seed color seed different traits see for example uh, if you have only one type of plant which is only tall which is having only purple flowers which is only having big fruits which is having only um, one type of uh, seed color seed shape so when you do any number of experiments you get the same plants again and again so you can't make any new discovery because you get the same plants again and again but if you have many traits for a particular character then you can make a study of uh, how many plants of a particular trait are obtained how many plants of a different trait are obtained you can make a research so luckily this pea plants uh, had many traits for different characters that's why he selected uh, um, this pea plants and uh, this pea plants had bisexual flowers bisexual flowers what is a bisexual flower it is a flower which has both male and female reproductive organs like hibiscus flower even pea plant it had bisexual uh, flowers which has both the male reproductive organ which is the stamens and the female reproductive organ which is the pistil but if you look at some plants you know like papaya plant uh, it has uh, unisexual flowers it has you can find a male papaya plant and a female papaya plant a male papaya plant has only male flowers because when you look into those male flowers you can f find only the stamens you have no pistils that's called as a staminate flower or male flower and the entire plant is called as a male plant but when you look at a female papaya plant on that you find only female flowers or when you look into the flowers you will have only the pistils so it's called pistillate flower no stamens pistillate flower or female flower you don't find both flowers in the same plant either only male flowers and a male plant or female flowers and a female plant here there were bisexual flowers but what is the advantage and this uh, plant it was predominantly a self pollinating plant predominantly it was a self pollinating plant meaning by birth by nature it was a self pollinating plant because it has both uh, uh, male and female reproductive organs it has bisexual flowers so it can easily self pollinate and even cross pollination also was very easy cross pollination is also very easy because uh, you have bisexual flowers so you can easily take the pollen grains of the anthers of one flower and drop it onto the stigma um, of another flower you know you, you did not go and search where is uh, the male flower or where is the female flower you cannot you need not go and search for uh, another opposite sex a uh, plant or a flower so you have bisexual flowers there itself so it's easy for you to uh, do cross pollination and uh, these pea plants they were annual plants meaning they complete their life cycle in one year if it be because if it completes in one year you can you can get its results fastly in one year itself because if a plant takes two years to complete its life like uh, three years to, to complete its life cycle and it, it becomes very long period yeah he has to wait uh, for two years to get the new seeds so that he will sow the seeds and get new plants or he has to wait for three years to get that fruits or the seeds and again sow them to get new plants next generation but since it is only a one year life cycle he can just wait for one year and get that plants and look at the ratio of different plants in that generation so it has a short life cycle because shorter the life cycle faster he can get his observations so it has only one year life cycle annual plants so because of these uh, five characters uh, mendel selected only pea plants for his experiments and again in pea plants he selected only certain characters seven characters which he can clearly identify with the naked eye so because there are many many characters many traits there were uh, pea plants whose leaves were dark green whose leaves were light green uh, who had uh, uh big size uh, pods i mean big size fruits small size fruits but that fruit size and leaf color he did not select he selected only simple seven characters which can be easily identified with the naked eye what are those seven characters we will see now seven characters so the first is a uh, height so okay here i'm taking the height or oh, sorry the character and here i'm taking the traits so height is a character and uh, he also selected um, the flower 
color as one more character and next uh, even the flower position okay and also the seed color seed color the seed shape and simil next uh, the pod color and the pod shape pod shape so one two three four five six seven it's easy to remember these uh, uh, seven characters the height flower color flower position seed color seed shape pod color pod shape pod is the fruit in which the seeds are found okay now in this height uh, every character has uh, two contrasting forms they are called as traits what is a character characters are the distinguishable features which you can distinguish one uh, uh, feature from another feature height is different from flower color is different from flower position they are completely different you can easily identify them you can easily distinguish them okay for example uh, in physics mass is completely different from length is completely different from time the three are independent so here all these independent individual distinguishable identifiable features are called as uh, uh, characters for example mm, if you take uh, emotions in uh, human beings uh, laughing and crying laughing and crying are they both characters you know you know because some people laugh as they uh, cry and some people cry as if they are laughing so you can't identify them you, when they are uh, laughing you cannot say either they're sad or happy because some people even or they cry during when they're too much happy or they cry when they're too much sad so these emotions they're not characters but which you can clearly definitely uh, distinguish from one another they are called as uh, characters and every character has two contrasting forms two contrasting expressions those are called as traits traits are the contrasting uh, forms or expressions of a particular character for example when i say height um, the height it can either be tall trait or dwarf trait okay the height can be expressed as either being tall or being dwarf these expressions the two contrasting contrasting meaning opposite the two contrasting expressions of a particular character are called as traits and flower color it it can be expressed either as a um, flower color can be expressed either as purple or white flowers and similarly flower position flower position can be expressed uh, uh, either as being axial or terminal terminal flowers are those which are produced at the tip at the terminal if you take this is the stem and this is the branch the flowers which are produced at the tips of the stem or the tips of the branches they are called as terminal flowers but which are produced anywhere on the stem anywhere on the stem or anywhere on the branches these flowers are called as uh, axial flowers so he could find two types of flowers axial flowers which are anywhere on the stem or anywhere on the branch and uh, at the tip regions which is the terminal flowers next seed color seed color can either be um, yellow or green seed shape can either be round or wrinkled and pod color has two traits which is uh, green and uh, yellow and pod shape can be inflated that is fat pods and constricted pods okay these are the two traits for each character now in these traits uh, there are certain traits which are called as the dominant traits all these are the dominant traits and all these are called as the recessive traits so why do you call these as dominant and why do you call this as recessive actually what is the physiology behind it what is the importance behind this uh, dominant traits and recessive traits see 
uh, generally a trait which is more advantageous to a plant, which is more beneficial to a plant, which is more useful to a plant, will be selected as a dominant trait, and which has less advantages or less use will be considered as recessive trait. So generally, for example, let's consider this height, seed color, seed shape. I say tall is a dominant trait. Why? Because generally, if a plant is tall, it is more exposed to sunlight and uh, it, ha it can perform more photosynthesis and prepare more food. So, tall is more dominant. And uh, because generally I was asking my students uh, uh, whether you do you prefer to be tall or short, all the students were saying, sir, I prefer to be very tall. Why? Yes, because I said they, they said I can easily dominate the shorter ones. I can uh, overbeat them or I can dominate them. Because generally I see the short people, you know, they're very calm, innocent and uh, they're very innocent. So even a plant also, if it's very tall, it can receive more sunlight, perform more photosynthesis also protect from the herbivores. Because if plant is very dwarf and short, uh, the herbivorous animals, they eat away the plants, they eat away the flowers like that. So if a plant is tall, more photosynthesis and also protection from the predators. So it prefers to be tall. Next coming to seed color. Why is yellow dominant and green recessive? So generally why does a plant appear green because of chlorophyll? It's not only the leaves which are green. Stem can be green or uh, the branch can be green or the fruits can be green, the vegetables can be green, even the flowers. Artabotris we call a flower which is very green in color. So different parts can be green but whichever part of the plant is green it's because of these chlorophyll pigments to perform photosynthesis, additional photosynthesis and make additional food. Now, uh, but what is the use of the seeds being green color? If the seeds are having chlorophyll and if they can perform photosynthesis, they cannot perform photosynthesis. Why? Because the seeds are always found in the soil. Seeds are for always found in the fruit, in the uh, vegetable. They are not exposed to sunlight. Even if the seeds are having chlorophyll, they cannot perform photosynthesis because they are always hidden from sunlight in the soil or in the fruits or in the vegetables. So it doesn't prefer to have this, it's unnecessary, it doesn't prefer to have this green chlorophyll. It prefers to be yellow. That's why yellow is dominant. And similarly, a seed which is round is uh, more dominant. Why? Because when a seed is round, it can evenly absorb water from the soil. Hmm? When a seed, if it's round, it can absorb water evenly. And when the water goes inside, uh, the food is, uh, the starch is hydrolyzed, sugars are produced, the sugars go to the embryo, and the embryo undergoes cell division, germinates, and comes out. That happens. But if a seed is wrinkled like this, there is uneven distribution of water. The, the complete f of, uh, food, uh, starch in the seed is not completely hydrolyzed or digested. So, uh, the seed doesn't germinate properly, these wrinkled seeds. But if a seed is round, there is even absorption of water and uh, digestion of food and the seed can germinate faster. So, it prefers to be round. So, like that. And similarly, if you take flower color, a purple flower is more colorful, more attractive. It can attract the insects for pollination rather than being white. So that's why purple is dominant. Like this, you have some characters, some traits which are dominant and some traits which are recessive. But for the moment, just remember that in height, tall is dominant uh, trait and dwarf is recessive trait. Seed color, yellow dominant, green recessive. Seed shape, round is dominant and wrinkled is recessive. These are the traits. Now, there is one more term which you should know that is LLs. What are LLs? LLs are the genes which control these traits. Genes which control the traits are called as LLs. Just like you have a dominant trait, receive trait, you also have a dominant LL, receive LL. And these LLs should always be represented with alphabets with alphabets. For example, if I say the tall LL as capital T, I have to represent the dwarf LL as small t. Because always, and remember, the two LLs of a particular character should be shown with the same alphabet. T and T. You cannot take T and D. Same alphabet. And the dominant trait is with capital letter and the receive trait with small letter. 
you can take not only tt you can take x or you can take o or you can take m or any alphabet for simplicity i take t and small t so these t t or b b or y y all these are called as lls the genes so the genes which control the traits are called as lls and these lls were uh, before in the mendelian period mendel called these lls or the genes as factors factors okay but later they were called as lls now now we will actually discuss uh, how M mendel made his uh, study on uh, pea plants but before going to that um, uh, once again i want to tell you some more terminology like uh, you know what's a character any distinguishable feature is called as a character you know what are traits the two contrasting forms or the two contrasting expressions of a particular um, character are called as traits and the genes which control these traits are called as LLs, and you have a dominant trait, recessive trait, and also dominant LL, recessive LL. But once again, I want to make it very clear: what is a dominant LL and a recessive LL? You know what is dominant trait, recessive trait? The dominant trait is which is more advantageous. but that's not the definition that's the background meaning the physiology but the actual meaning of a dominant trait uh, the definition of dominant trait is that it is a trait which can be expressed both in homozygous condition and heterozygous condition but recessive trait is which is expressed only in homozygous condition in pure condition so to make it more clear let me show you uh, what is homologous or what is homozygous heterozygous let me explain for example let us take this is a cell you take any cell from the body you take one skin cell and you open the cell you have the nucleus and in this nucleus you have chromosomes different organisms have different number of chromosomes in human beings we have 23 pairs of chromosomes or 46 chromosomes let's think uh, this is the first pair of chromosome this is a second pair and this is a third pair and this is a fourth pair and this is the 23rd pair like that so this is the first pair second pair third pair fourth pair 23rd pair you have like this uh, uh, exactly 23 pairs of chromosomes now and each pair of chromosome is called as a homologous pair each pair of chromosome is called as a homologous pair or homologous chromosomes and in each homologous pair uh, there is uh, one chromosome which comes from which comes from uh, father which is called the paternal chromosome one comes from the mother which is called maternal chromosome similarly in this, in this homologous pair this is a paternal maternal chromosome this is a paternal maternal chromosome paternal maternal chromosome paternal maternal like that you have so you have um, every pair is called as homologous pair or homologous chromosome um, which has two chromosomes one is coming from the comes from the father one comes from the mother and now let me show you one homologous pair in a bigger view this is one homologous pair of chromosomes and on this chromosomes you have the genes you know according to sutton and bowery uh, chromosomes are called the vehicles of heredity they carry uh, all the genetic information uh, in the form of genes uh, which we which was called as factors by mendel and but we call it as lls so for example uh, let's think uh, Uh, the gene which controls uh, the skin color sorry uh, the height gene which controls the height okay the uh, the growth hormone gene because that gene produces certain proteins which signals the production of growth hormone and hence it will grow so that growth hormone gene is let, let us think it's located somewhere in the second pair second homologous pair and somewhere the third gene or fourth gene or the last gene let us think this is the gene which we call lls let's think uh, he is having the both alleles are dominant in this person capital t capital t dominant uh, ll dominant ll so he is called as homozygous so this father is a tall father and and that tall is because of two same alleles two dominant the two are dominant alleles 
So he is called as a homozygous parent, homozygous tall parent. But uh, let's think there is another tall father in his uh, homologous pair, the second pair, uh, the last gene, the growth uh, gene or growth LL is um, capital T and small t. The capital T is a dominant LL and small t is a recessive LL. But still this father will be tall because the dominant LL will be expressed and the recessive LL small t will be suppressed, masked. So he is called as a heterozygous tall. Heterozygous tall. Homozygous tall. Homozygous is also called as pure, pure tall. And heterozygous is also called as a hybrid, hybrid tall because it has the two contrasting LLs. So this is homozygous condition, heterozygous condition. Homozygous condition can also be uh, like in a short father. In a short father, let's think uh, the two, uh, the two LLs are small t, small t. So he is a homozygous short or pure short. Short. You may you may ask me uh, here why is the small t not being expressed? Because that is the meaning. That is the definition of dominant LL. Dominant LL or dominant trait is a trait which is expressed both in homozygous condition and heterozygous condition. But uh, uh, recessive trait or recessive LL is the one which is expressed only in homozygous condition. Okay, so that is a homozygous heterozygous condition. Now, uh, one more thing, last uh, one more terminology. Uh, the what is meant by uh, phenotype and genotype? What is meant by phenotype and genotype? Phenotype is the external physical appearance, what you can see with your naked eye, what you can see uh, superficially. That is the phenotype the external appearance, the physical appearance, whether tall or dwarf, um, round or yellow, sorry, round or wrinkled, yellow or green, just what you can see with your eye. For example, let's take uh, tall, short, these are called as phenotypes. But what is a genotype? A genotype is the total genetic makeup, the total genetic constitution, the total genetic uh, material, or not the material, the constitution like uh, uh, if it's uh, heterozygous or homozygous tall, heterozygous or homozygous, uh, homozygous short, you don't have heterozygous short, homozygous short. See for example, I'll give you a plant and ask you, to, I, I'll give you a tall plant and ask you to find out uh, uh, is it homozygous tall or heterozygous tall. You can't say, but just looking at it you can say it's a tall plant. That's phenotype. But whether it is homozygous tall or heterozygous tall, you can't say by just looking at it. It's at the genetic level. You can only find it by you doing some experiments or research. So, uh, when I say genotype, it means to be homozygous tall or it can be heterozygous tall or it can be uh, homozygous short. Simply to say in a layman language, just mention tall or short, uh, round or wrinkled, yellow or green when you want to say phenotype. But when you want to say genotype, mention these words homozygous, heterozygous. Without this homozygous, heterozygous, you just call it as phenotype. But when you talk about genotype, mention these words. Is it homozygous, heterozygous? That's very, very important. Okay? So, uh, once again, I'm telling you, if I give you a tall plant, you can say it's a tall plant by looking at it because that's phenotype but if it's a homozygous tall or heterozygous tall you can't say by looking at it uh, that's called genotype you can't say by looking at it you can only you can only find out by doing the experiments now we'll come to the Mendel's uh, uh, experiments whatever he did see Mendel uh, he did uh, two types of crosses which are called as uh, a monohybrid cross and a dihybrid cross monohybrid cross and uh, dihybrid cross. So these are the experiments which Mendel did on pea plants. Uh, those experiments are called as monohybrid cross, dihybrid cross. But actually what is meant by a monohybrid cross? Monohybrid cross is the cross done between two parents to study the inheritance of a single character, to study the inheritance pattern of a single character. For example, if I take height, if I take two tall plants and cross them, then the next generation, uh, how many tall plants are formed or tall and short are they both formed 
or only short plants or if tall and short in water ratio that's called as monohybrid cross i keep only one character in my mind and do the experiment that's called as a monohybrid cross keeping only one character in the mind and doing the experiment you can take only one character uh, but dihybrid cross it is a cross done between two parents to study the inheritance pattern the mode of inheritance of two characters together for example um i take height as a character and also for the fruit size there are tall plants short plants there are even big fruits small fruits so two characters what are the two characters height and fruit size i mean like i want to see i'll take a tall plant with having big fruits and a short plant small fruits and uh, both of these i'll cross so in the generation how many tall plants with big fruits i get how many tall plants with small fruits i get how many small plants with big fruits and small plants with small fruits how many i get so i get four combinations in what ratio do i get so i'm considering two characters together that's called a dihybrid cross keeping two characters in the mind that's and i don't look about other, any other characters only two characters i keep in my mind and do the cross that's called dihybrid cross and similar trihybrid cross where i consider three characters in my mind and do the experiment and do the cross for example here um, along with the height the fruit size if i even consider the number of seeds i have so i take two plants one plant is tall plant big fruits and having more seeds in it and another plant is a short plant small fruits and less seeds and when i cross them the next generation what i get with the f1 generation how many plants i'm getting in what plants i'm getting and in what ratio i'm getting you get more combinations in here like for example how many plants i'm getting which are uh, tall plants big fruits and more seeds tall plants big fruits less seeds similar tall plants small fruits more seeds tall plants small fruits less seeds similarly even the short plant also this combinations you get nine combinations so that's a trihybrid cross but i will not discuss about trihybrid cross uh, we'll restrict our study only till dihybrid cross so what is a monohybrid cross it is a cross done between two parents to study to study the inheritance of a single character one character you don't consider or you don't at all talk about any other characters but dihybrid cross is a cross done between two parents to study the inheritance of two characters the mode of inheritance the inheritance patterns of two characters so we'll take a simple example and then you'll understand about monohybrid cross for example let's think uh, i am considering uh, uh, the two parent plants the parents one parent is uh, a tall parent i'm crossing with uh, another parent which is a uh, short parent tall and i consider here a homozygous tall plant or a pure tall plant is crossed with a pure short plant homozygous short plant because generally we start our genetic experiments or cross with pure plants keep this in mind we start generally a monohybrid cross or dihybrid cross with pure plants homozygous plants so here it's homozygous tall so when a homozygous when i say homozygous tall what is the genotype it is capital t capital t and when i say homozygous short it is small t small t i can say homozygous tall or pure tall homozygous short or pure short not hybrid tall okay so these are the parent plants and that is their genotype now do you, how many uh, gametes does this produce how many gametes what type of gametes does it produce if it's a uh, capital t uh, it produces uh, uh, only one type of gametes which is capital t and capital t for why because you, I, i told you already uh, let's take a, a homologous pair of chromosomes here you have capital t and this capital t is on this this is a paternal chromosome this is a maternal chromosome both are having the same alleles dominant alleles capital t capital t but this parent when it's producing the male gametes male gametes this will go to one male gamete or one sperm and this will go to another male gamete or another sperm so these two alleles will segregate they will separate that is called the law of segregation which we will discuss later 
So these two LLs will separate. This LL comes into one gamete and this LL comes into another gamete. Let's take this is a male parent, this is a female parent. And here also these two LLs, they'll separate. This goes into one female gamete and this goes into one female gamete. Of course you have only one type of uh, male gametes which are having capital T and one type of uh, female gametes which is small t. So these are the gametes, the possible gametes from this parent and from that parent. Now what are the possible fertilizations? Uh, what are the possible fertilizations? Meaning if this fertilizes, if this male gamete fertilizes with this female gamete, we're looking at the chance, we're looking at the probabilities, whatever combinations I can get. If this male gamete fertilizes with this female gamete, I get a capital T, small t zygote and that will develop into a tall plant. What if this can fertilize with this? Again I get a capital T, small t. And if fortunately or if this male gamete fertilizes with this female gamete, I get again capital T, small t. And if this fertilizes with this, I'll again get a capital T, small t. Okay. So look at, so these are called as F1 generation, F1, F meaning filial, okay, F doesn't stand for, stand for first, it's filial, filial is a group of plants or, or a group of organisms, the first generation, the generation which you get from the parents, the first generation is called as the F1 generation and in this F1 generation, what is the phenotype? what is the phenotype of F1 generation or I'll ask you what is the phenotype percentage of F1 generation and what is the genotype percentage of F1 generation. See is this tall or short capital T small t is tall because I said if you have a dominant trait beside a res if you have a dominant LL beside a recessive LL the dominant LL will be expressed. Okay once again I'm telling you Besides a recessive LL, if you have a dominant LL, the dominant LL will be expressed. That is the meaning of dominant LL. And the recessive LL will be masked, suppressed, inactive, non-functional. Okay, in that generation, it remains non-functional. Only the dominant LL will be expressed, which is the tall. So, it will be tall. So, this is tall. And this also, everything is same. So, all I say it as 100% tall plants. But what is the genotype? Is it homozygous or homozygous tall or heterozygous tall? It's homozygous, heterozygous tall. It's not capital T, capital T, capital T, capital T, isn't it? It's not homozygous tall. Different, different LLs. So heterozygous tall. So I get a 100% heterozygous tall. 100% heterozygous tall. So look at here. You have to mention the word heterozygous, I'm telling you. When you want to say phenotype, just tell tall or short, yellow or green, round or wrinkled. Don't say the words heterozygous or homozygous. Because that you can't tell by looking at the plant. In the phenotype, you can't tell. At genotype level, you can tell. So mention these words, homozygous, heterozygous condition. Just to say in a layman language, in genotype, mention the words heterozygous, homozygous. And in phenotype, don't mention them. So 100% tall and genotype is 100% heterozygous tall. This is F1 generation. Now, the same question I'll ask you in a different way. When two parents, one is homozygous tall and heterozygous so homozygous short. When the two parents are crossed, what is the phenotype and genotype percentage of F2 generation? Of F2 generation. So how do you get F2 generation? F2 generation meaning I take two plants from F1 generation and cross them. The cross pollination. I take pollen grains from this plant and put it here, and this pollen grains I put it from from this plant to here, and I get the fruits, and then again I get the seeds. The seeds I will sow in the soil, and I get plants and I get plants. These plants um, uh, are called as F2 generation. So to get F2 generation, I'll consider the F1 plants as parents. Take any two plants because all are similar. I'll take two F1 plants, F capital T small t, capital T small t. These are heterozygous tall and it's also heterozygous tall or hybrid tall. Okay, these are the F1 plants, F1 generation. So once again remember what is F1 generation which you get from the ancestral parents or the forefathers or from the grandfathers that is called as um, F1 generation. But F2 generation, I'll go to F1 generation, I'll go into the crop field of F1 generation, I'll select any two plants and I can do the experiment and get the next generation plants which are called F2 generation. So here I'm taking two F1 plants. Now, what are the possible gametes will it produce? It can produce capital T, small t. 
similarly I told you here if this is now capital T and if this is small t what happens this capital T uh, homologous chromosome comes here and this small t containing homologous chromosome comes here so here also it will separate like this capital T and small t so the two uh, LLs are separating okay this is called as the law of segregation okay before I continue here let me tell you law of segregation law of segregation states that the two LLs present for a particular character they separate they don't stick together they don't mix together like for example these two chromosomes they don't come into one gamut the two chromosomes will separate okay you don't f you, you don't get the two LLs into one gamut if that should happen the two chromosomes should come into one gamut which will never happen impossible so the two chromosomes of a homologous pair will separate into two individual gametes these two chromosomes they don't stick together they don't fuse together and mix it come into one single gamete or these two LLs they don't mix with each other they don't blend with each other they don't fuse with each other the two LLs uh, they stay inter I mean uh, they stay distinctly separate and they will safely separate into two individual gametes during gamete formation during gametogenesis so that's called as law of segregation so once again what is law of segregation the two LLs remember um, I mean this LLs can be capital T capital T or a capital T small t or a small t small t whatever it is the two LLs they don't mix with each other they don't fuse with each other they don't uh, blend with each other okay they will be separated segregation meaning separation they will separate into two individual gametes during gamete formation so what is law of segregation according to the law of segregation uh, the two LLs for a particular character do not mix or blend with each other instead they separate into two individual gametes uh, during gamete formation that is law of segregation and there is one more law which is called the law of dominance because you know the monohybrid cross finally gives us two laws the essence of monohybrid cross pr produces two laws law of dominance law of segregation what is law of def law of dominance um, so look at here in this is a hybrid plant hybrid tall heterozygous tall having capital T the dominant LL and small t the recessive LL but which is expressed only the dominant LL is expressed that's why this is tall this is tall and this is tall and this is tall but what about this recessive LL it's not expressed it's suppressed so in such a hybrid plant of the two contrasting LLs for a particular character here for the character height uh, only one LL is expressed which is called the dominant LL and the other is uh, uh, suppressed or masked uh, that's called recessive LL and this is called as a law of dominance so remember the law of dominance we talk with respect to only a hybrid we don't talk with homozygous plants homozygous uh, organisms or uh, pure organisms we don't talk we only talk with respect to hybrid um, organisms so what is law of do law of dominance according to law of dominance uh, in a hybrid individual of the two contrasting LLs only one LL is expressed which is called the dominant LL and the other LL is suppressed which is called the recessive LL Sim this is called the law of dominance that's it okay and law of segregation it can be any LLs homozygous or heterozygous in in law of segregation of uh, the two LLs for a particular character they do not mix or fuse or stick or blend with each other they separate into two individual gametes during gamete formation that is the law of segregation so remember monohybrid cross gives us two laws law of dominance law of segregation but dihybrid cross gives us another law which is called the law of independent assortment which we'll discuss later law of independent assortment so coming back here so I have taken my f1 plants as parents because I want to raise the f2 generation so here so these are the parents and these are the possible male gametes these are the possible female gametes let's think the male and female so male gametes female gametes now see the possible fertilizations if this can fertilize with this if this male gamete can fertilize with this female gamete I'll get a capital T capital T zygote and therefore a tall plant 
if this male gamete can fertilize with this, I'll get a capital T, small t. If this can fertilize with this, small t, capital T, shall I write like this? No. In a hybrid individual, always write the dominant LL first. It's okay, you can say small t, capital T, but it's a law, it's a rule, it's a rule to always write the dominant LL first and the recessive LL. Okay, always write the dominant LL first and then the recessive LL. Now, if this can fertilize with this, I get a, a small t, small t. So, now this is called as the F2 generation, F2 generation. So, do you understand what is an F2 generation? Uh, the generation which I get from F1 is called as F2 generation. Now, tell me, is it tall or sh uh, dwarf? Is capital T, capital T? It's definitely tall. This one, capital T, small t, it's also a tall. And this one, it's also a tall. So, I get three tall is to one short, one short plant. This is called as the phenotype, phenotype ratio. Tall is to short is three is to one, or simply three tall is to one short. That is phenotype. Just how many tall, how many short. I have three tall, three short. Don't bring the question of homozygous heterozygous condition here. Just tall and short. Three in three is to one ratio. Now coming to genotype. I said whenever I say the word genotype, just mention the words heterozygous, homozygous. Tell me, is this capital T, capital T? I mean, is this tall, homozygous or heterozygous tall? Same LLs. So it's a homozygous tall. But these two are capital T small t, which are heterozygous tall. They're hetero. And this is homozygous short. So I get a one homozygous tall is two. Two heterozygous tall is two. One homozygous short. Or homozygous tall is two heterozygous tall is two homozygous short. Is one is to two is to one. One is to two is to one. Okay, if they ask you phenotype percentage, you can say, can't you convert the 3 is to 1 ratio into percentage? 3 is to 1 percentage is 75% tall, 1%, so 25% short, 75% tall and 25% short. And this ratio convert into percentage 1 is 2 is to 1, I can say, this is 25 percentage homozygous tall, 50 percentage heterozygous tall and 25 percentage homozygous short. So, whether they ask you phenotype percentage or phenotypic ratio, you can do it like this. Okay. So, homozygous tall, heterozygous tall, homozygous short. Do you have a heterozygous short? Heterozygous short, meaning capital T, small t? No, it will not be short. If that's the case, it will be tall. So, remember dominant traits, which is tall here, can be expressed both in homozygous condition and heterozygous condition. That is the definition of uh, um, what is a dominant trait or what is a dominant LL. Dominant trait or dominant LL is one which can be expressed both in homozygous and heterozygous condition. But recessive trait or recessive LL is the one which can be only, only, only expressed in homozygous condition. Okay. Because besides a uh, recessive LL, if you have a dominant LL, definitely the dominant LL will be expressed and it will mask this recessive LL. This is the, the F2 generation. Now, I'll give you one example of this monohybrid cross. One example of this monohybrid cross. Okay. <laughs> the question is, uh, what is the, what is the phenotype percentage and genotype percentage of F1 generation when a homozygous tall plant is crossed with, let's say, heterozygous tall plant heterozygous tall plant. So, these are the parents. Okay, homozygous tall plant is crossed with the heterozygous tall plant. The question is, uh, what is the phenotype percentage, genotype percentage of F1 generation? Okay, I'll give you a minute time, you can do it. Okay, so now, 
you can pause the video and do it you have you done it right so homozygous tall what is the genotype when i say homozygous tall homozygous tall is it capital t capital t or capital t small t homo meaning same hetero meaning different so homo same tall meaning capital t capital t and heterozygous tall is capital t small t that is a genotype now what is the what is uh, the uh, gametes what possible gametes that can it produce it can produce capital t capital t and here it can produce capital t small t it can produce these are the gametes the possible gametes now let's look at the possible fertilizations and the possible zygotes if this will fertilize with this i'll get capital t capital t if this will fertilize with this i'll get capital t small t if this male gamete fertilizes with this female gamete i'll get capital t capital t and if this fertilizes with this i'll get capital t small t now phenotype just observe how many are tall how many short uh, is this tall yes it's tall this one it's tall this also is tall this also is tall so so 100% tall so it's 100% uh, tall what is the genotype uh, uh, this and this are capital T capital T which I call homozygous tall okay so uh, and this and this is heterozygous tall so 50% 50% because 2 out of 4 are homozygous tall and 2 out of 4 are heterozygous tall which means 50% 50% so it's 50% uh, homozygous tall and 50% homozygous short okay that is the answer now one more problem you can do it uh, the problem is uh, when I consider heterozygous tall parent and heterozygous tall parent no we have done just now so I'll take uh, uh, what is the phenotype and genotype percentage of F1 generation when I cross a heterozygous tall plant with homozygous short homozygous short okay these are the parents heterozygous tall homozygous short what is the phenotype and genotype percentage of F1 generation okay you can pause the video and find out right so homo heterozygous tall is capital T capital T homozygous short sorry heterozygous tall is capital T small t and homozygous short is small t small t so what are the gametes it can produce according to the law of segregation a capital T small t here a small t small t and uh, if this will fertilize with this I'll get a capital T small t and this with this I'll get a capital T small t and this with this I'll get a small t small t and this with this I'll get a small t small t so what do you get here this is tall and these are short so I get a tall is to short is 1 is to 1 ratio 2 is to 2 or 1 is to 1 I can say or 50% to 50% so phenotype percentage or phenotype ratio is tall is to short is 1 is to 1 but genotype I say heterozygous tall is to homozygous short is 1 is to 1 again ok capital T small t and capital T small t yeah right so what I am saying is that I am getting the same parental characters capital T small t capital T small t and small t small t so here the F1 generation are repeating the same parent characters in the same 1 is to 1 ratio okay that's about a, a monohybrid cross but one special note on uh, this monohybrid cross one is uh, uh, back cross and test cross what do you mean a special case of monohybrid cross is a back cross and what is a 
test cross. Back cross is the cross between the F1 plant with its parent. Okay, cross between a plant and its parent. Like uh, if I say if I take F2 generation plant being crossed with the F1 plant or the F1 plant being crossed with its ancestral parent. So back cross is a cross between the F1 and the parent. Okay. And test cross is a cross between a given plant, a given plant which whose genotype you want to test whether it's a, a homozygous or heterozygous if I, if I give you a tall plant if I give you a tall plant and ask you to find out uh, whether if it is a, a homozygous tall or heterozygous tall how do you do that given that's how do you test that given uh, plant that given plant should be crossed with a homozygous recessive homozygous recessive plant okay see this is called as a test cross How, for example let's think uh, I gave you a tall plant I gave you a tall plant phenotype is tall plant but you don't know the genotype whether homozygous tall or heterozygous tall how do you find then I look for a homozygous short plant and cross with it cross with it for us suppose let us think that's a homozygous tall plant let's assume let's assume that this given plant given plant is a homozygous tall plant so I'll search for a homozygous recessive plant a uh, short plant and cross with it so what you will get actually I'll get here only one type of gametes capital T and here one type of uh, gametes small t and when they fertilize everywhere you get one type of plants which is capital T small t so I'm getting 100% tall plants 100% tall plants so if a plant which is whose genotype is not known if I cross with a homozygous recessive plant and if I get all plants all tall plants 100% tall plants that that is a homozygous tall plant but what if that given plant is a heterozygous tall the given plant if heterozygous tall I'll cross it with a homozygous recessive parent so what it will give I get capital T small t gametes and here small t small t so if this fertilizes with this, I get capital T small t. If this fertilizes with this, I'll get a capital T small t. If this with this, I'll get a small t small t. And if this with this, I'll get a small t small t. Look at here. These are tall plants, and these are short plants. That is 50% tall plants and 50% short plants. So if a given plant, whose genotype I don't know, is crossed with a homozygous recessive plant and I get 50% tall and 50% short then that should be a heterozygous plant if I get all tall plants it's a homozygous tall plant is this clear so that's a test cross you're you're testing the genotype of a given plant the logic is just cross it with the homozygous recessive plant you will know if I cross with the homozygous recessive plants and in the field I'm getting all tall plants only then that's a homozygous tall pure tall plant but in the field if I'm getting uh, uh, approximately like 48 tall and 49 tall or 50 is to 50 or 100 101 almost same number of plants almost same number of tall and short plants then that given plant uh, was a heterozygous tall plant so that is called as test cross now we'll go to uh, another cross done by Mendel that's called as a dihybrid cross okay now I already told you what's a dihybrid cross dihybrid cross is a cross done between two parents to study the inheritance of uh, two characters the inheritance of two characters the mode of inheritance pattern of two characters let me take any two characters as examples okay I'm taking two characters as examples characters um, what and the traits For example, I'm taking here seed color as one trait, uh, one character, and uh, seed shape as another character. 
Now, what are the two traits for a seed color? It's either yellow or green. And seed shape round, wrinkled. These are the traits. And the gene or the LL of yellow is capital Y. The LL of uh, the recessive uh, trait green is small y. The LL of round is capital R and the LL of wrinkled is small r. Remember LLs are always alphabets and the words are the traits. So these are the two characters and their traits. Now um, I want to start the dihybrid cross. So what are the parent plants I will consider here? I already told you in monohybrid cross any genetic experiment or any cross should be started with pure plants, homozygous plants. Like I have considered tall, isn't it? I started with capital T, capital T and small t, small t. With pure uh, tall and pure short. I mean pure dominant and pure recessive. Here also when I say pure dominant, what is the parent? It's pure yellow, capital Y, capital Y and pure red, capital R, capital R crossed with pure recessive or homozygous recessive. When I say homozygous recessive, it is homozygous green and homozygous wrinkled. Homozygous green is small y, small y and homozygous wrinkled is small r, small r. Like this. This is the parent plants. So once again, what is this parent plant? It is homozygous yellow round. And what is this? This is homozygous double recessive, this is double dominant and double recessive, which is homozygous green and wrinkled. Okay. Now, one second. Right. So, these are the parents. Now, do you know? Do you understand what is this? Uh, do you understand what I what do you what I mean by saying capital Y capital R capital R means this? Let me male parent. This is a female parent. This male parent. If I look at the homologous pair, somewhere at third, second pair, or third pair, or fourth pair, I have this same two dominant LLs here on the same locus, capital Y capital Y, and capital R on the same locus. I have capital R capital R capital Y, capital Y on the same locus, capital R, capital R on the same locus. Similarly here also, if you consider uh, the round gene is located somewhere here, which are double recessive, okay, small y, small y, and uh, wrinkled, uh, it's here, smaller, smaller, it's like that. Now, these parents, uh, what gametes can they produce? It can produce only one type of gametes which is capital Y, capital R, isn't it? Because this chromosome comes into one gamete, this chromosome comes into one gamete. So I'll get capital Y, capital R into one gamete, and this capital Y, capital R into another gamete. Similarly here also, if this chromosome comes into, according to law of segregation, according to law of segregation, if this chromosome comes into one gamete, this chromosome another gamete, so I'll get a small y, small r, small my, small r. This is according to the law of segregation, these are the possible gametes I got. Now look at the possible fertilizations to find out or to discover what F1 plants I get. If this fertilizes with this, I get capital Y, small y, okay, and uh, capital R, small r. If this fertilizes with this, I can get capital Y, small y, capital R, small r, and this with this, capital Y, small y, capital R, small r, and this with this, capital Y, small y, capital R small I got the same plants here everywhere ev the genotype is same everywhere so this is F1 so if I ask you what is the phenotype what is the phenotype percentage and what is the genotype percentage of F1 generation when a homozygous uh, yellow round parent is crossed with a homozygous green wrinkled parent what do I get tell me is this yellow or uh, green capital Y small it's yellow and capital R smaller is it round or wrinkle? It's round. And the same thing with all because all are same. So I get a hundred percent yellow round. Hundred percent 
yellow round but genotype uh, i told you so many times um, uh, what is genotype always mention heterozygous homozygous condition this is very clear i told you about 9 million 192637.73 times i told you that in genotype always mention heterozygous homozygous word is this heterozygous or homozygous yellow capital y small y is a heterozygous not homo it's not capital y capital y. it's capital y small y heterozygous yellow and heterozygous round so it's heterozygous for both heterozygous it is heterozygous yellow and it's round heterozygous yellow round this is the uh, genotype now what if i want to bring out the f2 generation so i told you to raise f2 generation i consider f1 plants as parents i'll take i'll select two f1 plants and do the cross pollination this pollen grains here and this pollen grains here so what do i get um, select in two plants because all are same uh, this capital y small y capital r small r capital y small y capital r small r okay uh, what is this it is uh, uh, yeah yellow round yellow round of course heterozygous yellow round and this is also yellow round these are the f1 plants i'm crossing them the f1 plants now what are the possible gametes will this produce and what possible gametes can this produce both are same what possible gametes i can get a uh, capital y capital r capital y small r small y capital r small y small r and the same case here also i'll write again capital y capital r capital y small r small y capital r small y small r so these are the possible gametes is there any other possibility of gametes in this any other combination no only i get four possible combinations of gametes from this uh, from here okay now uh, what are the possible fertilizations and the possible f2 plants for that i can't show you like how i have shown you in that format i'll draw it in the form of a punnett square because it's four male gametes and four female gametes i go for a four into four punnett square okay let's take this a uh, female male and this a female so this is a male and female i spread this male gametes here and the female gametes here the female ga male gametes are capital y capital r capital y small r small y capital r small y small r and i will spread this female gametes here capital y capital r capital y small r small y capital r small y small r okay so the male gametes female gametes now look at this f2 plants what f2 plants i will get so this is right with blue this is capital y capital y capital r capital r and this one here these two i'll get capital y capital y capital r small r and this one capital y small y capital r small r and this is capital y small y capital r small r always write capital i mean dominant allele first when you have a heterozygous condition so i can hear capital y capital y capital r small r capital y capital y small r small r capital y small y capital r small r capital y small y small r small r capital y small y capital r capital r capital y small see you are getting different types of genotypes and capital r small r small y small y capital r capital r small y small y capital r small r capital y small y capital r small r capital y small y small r small r small y small y capital r small r small y small y small r small r yeah now this is our f2 generation this is our f2 generation now tell me in this f2 generation i want you all to tell me what is the phenotype ratio phenotype ratio what is the phenotype ratio see so look at here in this f2 plants i get this i get some plants with their same parent characters what are the parent characters yellow round isn't it yellow round okay so uh, yellow round the this is the parent character and their grandfather i mean their 
forefathers uh, what is there uh, i have yellow round here anyhow so yellow round yellow round is the parent character and also their grandfather and green wrinkled is their grandmother green wrinkled what i mean to say is that in f2 generation you will observe their parent characters and also their grandparent characters the green wrinkle also okay yellow round and green wrinkle these two characters you will find but in f2 generation you will also find some new characters which is the yellow wrinkled character and also the green round character also you will find what are those yellow wrinkled yellow wrinkled and also green round green round characters also you will find but remember these yellow wrinkled and green round these are were not found in their parents or grandparents or in the ancestors these are the new characters which are now appearing in the f2 generation what do what are these new characters called i, I already told you in the beginning these new characters are called as variations and the variations uh, are they also called as recombinants recombinants or variants okay we will see how many plants of each character are obtained here first uh, um, tell me this one is this yellow capital y capital o, is it yellow yes capital r capital o, is it round yes so this is yellow round and this one is also yellow round this is also yellow round this one yellow round this one this one it's yellow round and this one yellow round and this one yellow round this one now tell me this one is it what it's yellow round and this one yellow round so i get uh, how many 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 yellow round and tell me how many uh, what is this this is yellow and smaller smaller is wrinkled okay this yellow wrinkled i'll put a tick mark this one is also yellow wrinkled and this one is also yellow wrinkled so one two three three yellow wrinkled now tell me uh, what are these small by small y it's green and capital r capital r is round so this is yellow round and this one is also yellow round and this one is also yellow round so one two three i'm sorry small way small way is green and round this green round green round so three green round and only one uh, green wrinkled one green wrinkled so the uh, parent characters and their grandparent characters are in 9 is to 1 but these uh, variants or the recombinants uh, the new characters they are in 3 is to 3 ratio 3 yellow wrinkle is to 3 green round this is a phenotype percentage of f2 generation in a dihybrid cross but you may get a doubt what is the genotype ratio genotype ratio i don't want to show here because it becomes a very long list like 1 is to 2 is to 2 is to 1 is to 3 is to it becomes a very long list for example what is this it is homozygous yellow homozygous round that's one plant homozygous yellow homozygous round and this one homozygous yellow heterozygous round even this also homozygous yellow heterozygous round these two are homozygous yellow heterozygous round so homozygous yellow homozygous round is one homozygous yellow and heterozygous round are two I like that you have to see it's a big, it becomes a big list i don't want to focus on genotype ratio just restrict our study only till phenotype ratio so wha uh, what is the phenotype ratio of f2 generation in a dihybrid cross it is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 this is about uh, the monohybrid cross dihybrid cross and one last point the essence of dihybrid cross gives us uh, one law law of independent assortment what does this law of independent assortment state um, it states that uh, during the inheritance of two or more characters these characters are inherited independent of one another they don't influence one another for example if i take uh, mm, see if i take uh, 
uh, a yellow round and green wrinkled do you all do i always get yellow with round only i mean if there is a yellow seed should it definitely be round or yellow can even become in come in a combination of green uh, yellow wrinkled yes when it's yellow it's not necessary that it should definitely be round yellow can also come in a combination with wrinkled this yellow round they're not influencing one another they're not sticking together they're not combining together they're not coming together the i mean what i want to say is that the seed shape and the seed color the two characters don't influence one another they don't govern each other they're independent of their inheritance if i take a tall plant and uh, uh, big fruits if i get tall plants it not necessary that all plants should definitely be having big fruits it's not necessary tall plants can have short fruits tall plants can have even small fruits similarly small plants you can get with big fruits and small plants you can get with small fruits so no two characters of course you have some uh, exceptions like codominance um incomplete dominance there are some exceptions but in general context you know uh what does law of independent assortment state law of independent states that no two characters during their inheritance will influence each other their inheritance their assortment is independent of one another okay so during the inheritance of two or more characters um the 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 inheritance of these two or more characters are independent of one another they don't influence one another they don't come in a combination or they don't come strictly in with one particular uh, character okay uh, and in um, law of dominance also you have some exceptions uh, like incomplete dominance codominance and here also in law of independent assortment also you have some exceptions some deviations in that law like linkages uh, epistatis um, multiple alleles you have some exceptions but in general you know what is law of dominance in a hybrid of the two contrasting alleles only one allele is expressed which is called dominant allele and the other is suppressed which is called the recessive allele and that's called the law of dominance that comes from monohybrid cross but in dihybrid cross you have a law of independent assortment which states that during the inheritance of two or more characters their inheritance is not depending on one another or influencing one another okay that's it and hope this was helpful and in next session we'll discuss about evolution